This video is all about tennis trading on Betfair and most specifically how to predict the price moves in tennis trading before they happen. This is going to be really, really good. We're coming up in this video. I'm going to show you the tennis odds prediction formula. So how you can predict the price moves, movements in tennis with no software, no fancy spreadsheet, and not even a calculator. You don't even need a calculator for this. It's actually that simple. And I'm going to show you some real life demonstrations to back this up. And of course, give you ideas of how you can profit from this. So let's get into it. Now, if you saw our last video on tennis trading, you will remember that I covered exactly what makes the tennis markets move. And we established the two big things that makes the tennis markets move are break points being scored and set points. Now, break points probably the, the, have the biggest impact, but set points are pretty crucial too. So, of course, if we can know where the prices are going to be after a break point is scored or after a set point is scored, then it's going to be pretty useful information. So, of course, I mean, why would you want to predict the moves? Now, you could plan your trades in advance. You could, using this formula, look at the starting price of the favorite and know, based on the formula, that after he scores a break point, we know where his price is going to be. And if he wins the set, we know where his price is going to be. So we can decide on what trade we're going to do. Are we going to back that favorite? Because then we're going to know how many ticks we can win if we were to back that favorite. And, of course, if we wanted to lay that favorite we know how many ticks that we are risking if he was to go and score a break point or to win the set and of course you can use that information in play as well and of course it does help you always want to know your worst case scenario when you are trading sports you always want to know your worst case scenario and at the same time this formula can actually help you spot opportunities because from time to time the markets can overreact to stuff and if you know where the odds should be that can create an opportunity. That can create an opportunity right there. But before we go any further, I do want to quickly stress that this formula is only really applicable to three set matches only, uh, the, the best of three format, which is found in most tennis matches, apart from obviously the Grand Slam matches where men's matches are best of five. So don't use this formula on the best of five as it's not as accurate but it is pretty accurate on the free set matches. So you might be thinking, how is this even possible? How can you predict the price moves in a, a game like tennis, in a sport like tennis? If you try to predict the price moves on another sport, you know it is very, very difficult, whether it's pre-game or in play. It's very, very hard, very, very hard. But with tennis, it is actually quite possible. It's actually quite easy. And you, like I said, you don't need a fancy spreadsheet. You don't need a crystal ball. The tennis markets are actually pretty rigid. They're actually pretty rigid. And the in-play movement in a, in a tennis match is largely influenced by the starting price of the favorite. Now, once the, the match begins, then pretty much every point moves the market, as we know. And the starting price of the favorite affects where the prices are going to be after things like break points are scored and after set points are scored. And it's pretty simple to then work out where the odds are going to be, as you're going to see when we get into the formula. But before we get into this video, I do want to give you a quick heads up. Now, this formula that I'm about to give you is available to download as a free cheat sheet. So you can keep watching the video, but also check the link in the description and you can download this for free and you can take this away. You can print this out. You can stick it on your wall. And you can use this every time that you want to trade tennis. It is very, very useful. And after a while, you're not even going to need it. But to learn the formula, you can download this cheat sheet. It is, the link is in the description and you can grab that. You can do this after the video. You could do it right now. Totally, totally up to you. But if we want to predict the price after a break point is scored. So what we do is we take the starting price of the favorite and we divide it by two. Simple. <laughs> you just pretty much take the starting price of the favorite and you know that after they score a break point and hold their serve as well, as it's important to mention, that we're just going to divide the price by two. That's how we can predict where their price is going to be. So for example, if Roger Federer's starting price was 1.20, then we can expect that 
if he scores the break point and holds his serve, his price is going to be 1.10. Pretty simple. If Roger Federer's price was 1.30, we just do the same formula, and that means that his price would be 1.15 after that. It is so simple. It is very, very simple. But how do we then predict, predict the price if Roger Federer was to go on and win the set? So what we would do is we would take his price after the break point and then we divide that by two. And of course, in that last example, that would probably put his price into 1.05. But you could also do this. I mean, if you wanted to try and predict it before the match, then you could just take his starting price and just divide it by four. Simple as that. Just divide it by four. That's if you want to predict it before the match. It is much more accurate to predict it in play because then you have the actual breakpoint uh, price that you can look at and then you just divide that by two just in case that was wrong. Like I said, it's not 100% exact science. But if you did want to work it out pre-game, you just divide the starting price by four. And if you're in game, you just take the break point price and divide that by two. And then you're going to be pretty close to getting the, the accurate price after he wins a set. And so as in the same example, if his price after the break point was 1.10, that means we just expect his price after winning the set to be 1.05. Simple as that. Now, I'm sure you're thinking this question, and I hope you're asking this question, to be honest. How accurate is this so as i just touched upon it's not an exact science it's not a hundred percent exact science it's not something you can bet your life on <laughs> so it is accurate it is very accurate it works very very well but remember this could be give or take a few ticks now the lower the starting price the more accurate this becomes but the higher the starting price the lower the accuracy and the higher the starting price that's when we have to apply this rule give or take a few ticks but like I said as long as you can get in the ballpark then the best way to approach this formula is just so you can get an idea of where the odds are going to be and you can measure your risk or measure your potential profit depending on the type of trade you want to you want to open and of course keep in mind that injuries and a player that is really really dominant can impact on this now injuries are going to make the markets go wild so once an injury happens, all of this goes out the window. You can't use any sort of formula to predict the odds at that point on. At that point on, a lot of human emotion will come into play. So you have to keep that in mind. And also a dominant player can impact this, um, but that's not going to impact it hugely. I mean, when a player is really, really dominant, it can pressure the market into maybe taking a few extra ticks. That is mark that is just you know greed <laughs> that is greed there for you you'll get players that will just say hey this guy's really dominant i'll take whatever price is available and it'll push the price on that player a little bit lower but again that's probably only going to be by a few ticks but th the best way of approaching this is just to say look i'm looking for a ballpark figure of where i expect the odds to be after a player breaks or after he wins a set and this formula is is getting me there so remember as well it is much less accurate when the underdog breaks first as well. This is when things can get a little bit messy. But let's take a look at some real life examples just so you can see all this for yourself and I can back this up. So this is a match with Novak Djokovic as the favorite and currently he's 1.15. I think maybe by the time this actually starts, he might be 1.16. But either way, I, I would say uh, after his first break point, currently based on this, he probably or he technically should go into 1.07 and a half, right? But obviously that doesn't exist. So it's probably going to round down and he's probably going to be available at 1.07 after the first break point. And then half of that, if he wins the first set, could be 1.03, 1.04. So around that. But anyway, let's let this match go and play and then we'll see where the odds go after the first break. And there we have it. So Djokovic has broken and his price goes in to 1.07 and 1.08 to lay. Obviously, I mean, they're going to fluctuate. The prices do fluctuate depending on the action. Dolgopolov, if I pronounced that correctly, he is now serving. Um, so, you know, the prices are going to move around. But like I said, we're looking for the worst case scenario and we worked it out as it's going to the price is going to touch uh, 1.07. Uh, let me just have a look at this. 
So it hasn't actually traded at 1.07, according to this, but we've had a lot of money matched at 1.08. But like I said, we're doing this to work out our worst case scenario. And there we have it. Our worst case scenario was if Djokovic broke and held 1.07 and it pretty much hit 1.08. But anyway, there, there's just an example of predicting the price move um, based on the starting price. And so we saw that Djokovic, after he broke, his price was 1.08. And then we can work it out that after he breaks, his price, if he goes on to win the set, is going to be half of that. So uh, 1.04. And it's exactly pretty much where it's landed up. Bit of uh, market pressure forcing that into 1.03. But it's, it's pretty much there, a uh, very straightforward set for Novak Djokovic. And as you could see, that's pretty much how you work out where the odds are going to move to. Um, and you've seen it there for, uh, in, before your very eyes. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Djokovic, very comfortable first set. We saw his price move in 1.115 at the start, but he did kind of start at 1.16, which is why his price did move into 1.08 after the first break. And then it's actually gone into 1.03. So we're, we did predict it would hit 1.04. One of the reasons it's probably gone into 1.03 is because he was so dominant. He's won, he's six games and only dropped one game in that set. So as mentioned as well, when a player is really dominant, it can force the price a little bit lower. In this case, it's forced it a tick lower than uh, we were expecting. Um, but there you have it. There, there's just a quick example. Let's take a look at some other ones. So you can see in this match, Sibyl Kova is a 1.22 favorite. So based on this, if she breaks serve and then holds her own serve, uh, she's going to go into around 1.11 based on this. This is just about to start. And then if she wins the set, we can expect half of that, which means she should be around 1.05 or 1.06 to win to, to win the match go heading into the second set if she does win the first set so let, let's just let this one go and play and then we'll see what the odds are after the first break point and there you have it she's just broken to go three one up in this one and her price has moved in to 1.11 and uh she's just serving now she's just scoring a point on serve so it's going to shorten further if she does go on to win the next game. So uh, based on this, we can also expect that if she goes on to win the set, we can now do that calculation to say she's probably going to go in to around 1.05 if she wins the set. And of course, you can now measure your risk. I could now think, hey, if I want to lay her right, right here, um, I could lay her and I know I'm only risking five ticks uh, if I want to lay her at 1.10 or 1.11. So it's quite a big upside and I know exactly where I stand in that case. So it's, it's little things like that, which is what you're going to use the formula for. You're going to use it to plan your trades and measure your potential worst case scenario or your best case scenario. I mean, if I wanted to back Sipulk over here at 1.08, I know that probably... The most I can gain is about three ticks because she's going to move into 1.05. So you make your own mind up on which is the better option to do at this point. But that's just another example of the formula in, in full effect. And of course, what can happen is sometimes a player scores a double break, just like Sibyl Kova has done here. And that means her price pretty much goes in to where we would expect it to be if she wins the first set. So th this can also create opportunities because then you you, you maybe have a, a free shot at laying her for the rest of the set. I mean, she's only got one game to, to win, to win the set. And it could be a quite a quite a low risk lay at this point to kind of lay her and see if she fails to win the set from here you can gain some ticks this way but that can happen as well sometimes if a player does uh hit a double break and then they're that dominant they can actually hit their uh their their price for winning the set before the set is actually over so it's just a small example of the type of opportunities that uh that can happen in tennis trading but uh Sibukova here has hit a double break so she moved into 1.05 um she's now serving to win the set um, but basically the, the markets are assuming this, this set is pretty much done. And just to completely update you on this, in the end, she did win the set and her price was at 1.05. So like I said, it, when you get the double break situation and as predicted using the formula, we know that her price is probably going to be around 1.05. So like I said, it can create a very low risk opportunity to oppose Sibyl Kova in that uh, sort of scenario because you know the price isn't really going to move against you. Of course, it is a bit of a long shot for her to then go and lose the set <laughs> from that point on. But 
I'm sure you get the idea. So anyway, that's just another example of how you can use the formula to work out where the odds are going to move in an in-play tennis match. So as you can see, the formula is pretty accurate when it's uh, straightforward and the favorite scores the break point and goes on to win the set. But you might be wondering what happens when the underdog scores the break point. Where can we expect the prices to be? And I must admit, the formula does start to get a little bit harder to use and a little bit less accurate when it is the underdog scoring the first break point because so many other forces come into play when it is the underdog. Um, a lot can depend on how much the markets really like the favorite, how much of a fan favorite he is. If it's Andy Murray or Rafael Nadal or Djokovic, Federer, one of those top names who goes behind, then you can expect the markets are going to favor them a little bit more. If it's a less lesser known favorite, then the markets can overreact a little bit more and then go in more favor of the underdog. And other things like time value and the dominance, just how good the underdog looks can start to come into play. But we do have a bit of a formula to use. Remember, when we're using this odds prediction formula, we're looking for, yeah, you know, what to expect. We're kind of looking for worst case scenarios, best case scenarios. So basically, the way, the way to keep it in mind is that if we're, if we're trying to look at for the price on the favorite after the underdog scores a break point, we're going to take the starting price of the favorite. And then basically, the formula is we're just going to expect that price to double or more. And with emphasis on the more, <laughs> it's probably going to be a bit more than double, but it's going to, in most cases, double in the very, very least. And then it's pretty similar uh, at the at the end of a set. So we can kind of start to work out where the where the favorites price would be if the underdog goes on to win a set. So we're just going to take the price after the break point. And this is probably better done in play once you can see the break point price. And then it's the same again. We're just going to expect that to double or more, double or more. Uh, so like, like I said, if you're trying to work out your best case or worst case scenario, then expect those odds to double in the very least. But uh, depending on who it is, it could be a lot more. It could be a lot more. Every situation is different. And yeah, the markets can get a little bit more crazy when it is an underdog who uh, starts to take the lead. But here's just a quick example, just so you fully understand it. So if we go back to Roger Federer and his starting price was 1.20 and then the underdog scores the first break point to go ahead, we would then expect Rod Roger Federer's price to be 1.40 or more. So if, if we were planning to back Roger Federer at the start of the match, we know that if it goes wrong and he concedes a break point, his price is going to go up to at least 1.40 or probably higher than that. So you can keep that in mind. And obviously, if you wanted to lay Roger Federer, then you know that you're probably going to gain at least 20 ticks, but probably more, probably more. So you're going to be gaining a minimum of 20 ticks if he was to concede the break point uh, first. And then obviously, from there, if the underdog was to win the set, we can expect Roger Federer's price going into the second set to be at least 1.80 or more, <laughs> or more. So you do have to keep that in mind. And like I said, it, it does get a lot less accurate when there is an underdog involved. The markets can go into a bit of carnage, but just keep that in mind that you have to expect the price on a favorite is gonna double or more. So it's gonna double in the very, very minimum. And here's just a quick example from a recent uh, women's match. This is Putin Seva against uh, Madison Keys. And as you can see, Madison Keys is 1.29 favorite. So we know that if she was to concede the first break point, her price is going to rise to 1.58 as a minimum. So it's going to double as a minimum, but we know it's probably going to go higher than that. So let's see what happened after the first break point was scored. Her price actually went to 1.67, so higher than the 1.58. And after that, when the break point was secured, it went even higher up to 1.92. So pre pretty much her price trebled there. So obviously, you just have to expect that as a minimum, the price is going to double and then it's going to be more depending on the time of the set. This was uh, definitely a bit more because this was near the end of the set and uh, Putin Sever was getting close to winning the set. So you're going to see a bigger price swing. But just, just try and keep that in mind. If you are planning to lay the favorite and they were to concede the first break point, you can expect their odds to double in the very least. So let's just run through the odds prediction formula once again. If we want to work out the, the, the price on the favorite after they score a break point, we just take their starting price and divide it by two. 
And of course, if we want to work out their set point price, we just take the break point price and divide that by two. Or if we want to work it out before the match, we can just take their starting price and divide it by four. So you could do this before the match and note it down so you know where you expect the prices to move. Or if you're doing this on the fly and you notice the player's just broken, you can just divide that price by two to work out where the odds are going to move to next. And of course, you could do this on the flip side by knowing that once they've hit that break point price, if they are broken back, they're going to go back to that starting point price. But anyway, all of this is actually in the odds prediction formula. Uh, if you want a copy of this, it is available for absolutely free. You can download that. The link is in the description of this video. So just scroll down, go into the description, click the link and download your copy. You can refer to that. You can keep it on any device and refer to it as and when you're trading tennis. You could print it out and stick it on the wall so you don't forget it when you're trading tennis. Um, but of course, eventually, I mean, after using this for a short period of time, it's going to become second nature. But this is definitely, definitely very, very handy if you're new to trade in tennis. So go download, go download it. I mean, it's absolutely free. You've got nothing to lose there. But anyway, if you enjoyed this video and you enjoy videos like this, anything to do with trading on Betfair, then hit that S and become a subscriber. Hit the notification bell as well so you get all the new videos for free as soon as they are released. And of course, check out all our other videos. Um, lots of good videos in there. So that is about it. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you guys in the next video.